I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. And uh, as you recall, maybe last, our, our last post was uh, Barry Cohen, and we have his lovely wife here today, Robin. Right. Thanks for joining us all the way from North Carolina. Thank you. It's nice to have you here, and uh, you're on a mission trip with, uh, with a number of people, with Alan Wright and his, mm -hmm. his church group. And it's been wonderful. We had a good meeting with him last night and everything. So anyway, now you weren't from Kentucky, is that right? Where no. were you born? I was born in Seattle. Oh, up, up in the northwest there. Right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you live there very long? Um, we left there on my 14th birthday. Oh, okay. Was, was your family LDS? No, no. Oh. As a matter of fact, my family were nothing. I was raised oh. <laughs> with absolutely no belief system, and they just kind of dabbled you know, occult things, really? astrology. Um, no Bible in the house, or do you remember a I Bible? I don't think there was a Bible in the house. I don't <laughs> believe there ever was. Yeah. Um, I did feel some sort of need to have a uh, secure system. You know, as a little, yeah. little child, I can remember always searching and trying to figure out what what, which was what's right yeah. because it was kind of all over the board in our house. How many brothers and sisters? I had two brothers. You? I'm the middle child. You're middle. Okay. And so at 14, where do you guys move? We moved to Louisville, Kentucky. Aha. Uh -huh. Where the story really gets going. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that's where you went to high school, went to high I school guess. There. And, okay. Um, and then just being kind of uh, adventurous and maybe a bit rebellious, I went to college in Utah in St. George at Dixie College. Oh, you did? I did. Um, did not become a Mormon there, but that was my first exposure to the Mormon what church. What made you and choose Dixie? I'd never been to Utah, never been to the desert, and just, just kind of wanting to experience something new and something different. And wow. You know, I really actually had no idea that there was a whole state with a whole different belief system than most of the country <laughs> until I got there. there. Most Mormons yeah, down right, there, huh? exactly. Didn't know anything about it. How fascinating. <laughs> Thought yeah. It sounded like it had a nice climate, you know. Oh. You sense God's hand in that, of course. Um, uh, yeah. Hard no? to say, but yeah. that's kind of you know, kind of how I got started towards that. Okay. Uh, so. Did you hear much about Mormonism down um, there? Anybody uh, try to? Oh sure. I had a boss. Or? I worked for the campus. They had a catering system, and I had a a boss that ran that. And he tried. I had a Spanish professor that I babysat for sometimes, and oh. he and his wife a, a little bit. But Good. they didn't get very far then because idea, I was eighteen and nineteen, and there was way too much to do with partying and fun things to do to get interested in that <laughs> at that point. Stuck with religion. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So you've finished there? Do you go on? Where do went you back go to, after that? Went back to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and I stayed there for the next few years. And then at 23, you know, off and on I had talked to the missionaries. I talked to the oh, missionaries really? in Utah, actually. And, yeah. and you know, just kind of listened to them a little bit, but didn't get too serious about it. And then I talked to them again because I still had that need that I had had as a little girl to figure out what I believed. And I, I really hadn't figured it out. You sensed there was a God that you wanted to uh, Yeah, I did. I, to, I, I felt like I need to know the rules to live my life by. <laughs> I was just kind of Drifting some and didn't moral really, compass. Yes, I need some kind of compass. Yeah, yeah. some kind of direction. Oh. Of course, didn't know a Bible, didn't have a Bible. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, because I had some exposure to Mormonism, I was still curious about it. And from yeah. time to, of course, we didn't have the internet. You couldn't just look up well, a question. Yeah, sure. So, you know, for, I, there was still a little interest there. Yeah. So, so what happens at age 23, did you say? At age 23, I had met with the missionaries and I actually did get baptized into the Mormon church at age 23 oh. in Louisville. The message they gave, uh, what did you hear? Um, 
Well, I kind of think I got the budget version because they didn't give me any movies or anything, and I complained about that a bit. But you know, they <laughs> had the film flip chart. Yeah, I'm like you know, the flip chart discussions, uh, the typical first vision and Joseph Smith yeah. and. Um, you know, the promise in the back of the Book of Mormon about reading it and praying about it yeah. and getting the, uh, a testimony, a witness of it and all of that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I did that. I did get a testimony. And so I kind of thought it was kind of nice for a while. I was kind of in a good place where I thought, well, yeah. I finally figured it out. I finally, yeah. you know, am on track. It felt to, like you've joined the true church right. or the only true church, I guess, as they, as they say. Interesting. So you read the Book of Mormon, prayed about it, and yeah, and the Book of Mormon, to be honest, is pretty boring. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to read that book because you know it kind of kind of lulls you to sleep. I guess it's good for insomniacs, but <laughs> well, people do laugh but, about getting through Second Nephi, but uh, and Isaiah. And yeah, all that stuff, the Book but... of Mormon is not a great piece of literature that's just enthralling, but it's just the whole feeling of the things that they taught, yeah. and of course the friendship. And once you start attending the church, yeah. lots of you're making relationships with friends, and they sure. seem like good, sincere people, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, and they, of course, you sense the family and the, how important that is mm -hmm. and temple marriage. So did you start looking forward to a temple marriage at that um, point? Or? Not immediately. As a matter of fact, I moved back to Seattle, oh. actually two weeks after I was baptized, oh. and lived in a house with five other women, five other single girls. And Any LDS? You know? No, no, no. But I got very active in the LDS church, so I was the odd one out there. Okay. Uh, it, that was kind of funny, and served in many callings, young women's presidency as a stake missionary. Um, wow. and so I stayed there about five years, and then I moved back to Kentucky um, to help my mom because my grandmother was dying. Oh. Now, did you have a temple recommend at this point? No, did you no I had not been to the temple. temple. Okay. I did not go to the temple until Barry and I went on our wedding day. Okay. So you come back to Louisville then because of family? Because of family. Issues mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, then what happens? Um, <laughs> I met my husband. Yeah. Um, at the Mormon church. <laughs> Came yeah. back to church. Now, he and, was active then? Or well, he, he was, was in his, investigating. He was investigating. Uh, I hadn't didn't, been baptized He had not yet. been baptized, okay. but I had been attending uh, in Louisville oh, a couple months when the missionaries brought him to church. And, Just you happened know, to be yeah, your Lord. And, and I kind of checked him out and thought, hmm. <laughs> not bad. Hmm, not bad, you know. <laughs> So, uh, uh, I and I had a roommate in Seattle who was going to move back to Louisville. She just wanted to experience something different. She was LDS. At that time, I had moved away from the oh. non-LDS friends. Yeah. And I remember calling her and saying, well, there's a new guy that just joined the church, and I have plans for him, so hands off. And she, <laughs> <laughs> and she, said, oh, she said, we'll see about that. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting rivalry, but yeah. you can tell who won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a year later... You, you so wait a year. We then, wait a year, and, 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 and we got married temple. in the Atlanta Temple. Uh, what yeah. did you think of that experience in the temple? Um, the endowment was, and I had some Mormon friends who you know I had known for several years in Seattle that had tried to prepare me for it as best as they could, as they and so yeah. it wasn't a total you know shock, but. Yeah. Um, the endowment was bizarre. I thought yeah. it was just extremely strange. Did you know that masonry was involved in that? At I didn't all? know it at that time. Yeah, I did not. Um, I thought that the <laughs> at the time of the sealing, because we we got took our endowments out on our wedding day. Well, yeah, because you make that yeah, trip. Yes, from made Louisville. that trip. Yeah, and um, at the time of the sealing, all, the only thought I had going through my head, well, you know, at first, even though my parents were pretty supportive and pretty accepting, mm -hmm. I was sad that they weren't going to be at my wedding sure. because they couldn't go. Yeah. But when I realized that I was getting married wearing this green apron with fig, fig leaves <laughs> embroidered on it over my wedding gown, I was kind of relieved they weren't seeing it. <laughs> and that was the thing yes. going through my head is I cannot believe what I'm wearing to be married. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that was, I, yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah, That's that was funny. crazy. <laughs> I never, because so. guys aren't worried about wedding dresses or anything, mm -hmm. but you, you sense that that was so funny. That, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was really embarrassed. I thought, oh, I'm so glad my parents don't know that my mom doesn't see what I'm wearing. <laughs> 
Oh, isn't so. that funny too? And Satan's the one that tells people to wear that. And now it goes right over your head. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? it? Yes, you, you just don't even sense. put that on and never give it a second thought. That's Satan's it's amazing. the one that does that. Amazing. But you were, then you were active and raised your family right. and, and so on. So what happens? Now, you brought, um, Barry said that every once in a while you'd have a question about something. Um, what kind of questions did you have? Every now and then, um, some of the temple, mainly the endowment, would just start to bother me, or some of the covenants. For example, uh, the covenant that you covenant to give all the, your time, talent, resources, I'm not, I'm not doing justice yeah. to it, to the, yeah. the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, to we don't do church. that. Yeah. yeah, to the church, not yeah. to Christ, not to the God. Savior, not to God, <laughs> yeah. but to the church, you know. And yeah. I even went one time and asked somebody in the temple presidency while I was there, because that's the only you place did? you can, and said, well, we don't do that. And they said, well, you're taking it too literally. <laughs> and so I went, oh, so I, I, we don't really have to do that? Okay. What I said was, I'm not sure I'm willing to do that. I'm making this covenant, and I'm not sure I'm willing to do that. I mean, if the church yeah. called me tomorrow and said, we're taking your house, I'm not sure I would do it. And they said, you're taking it too literally. Well, so, the church you know, would never ask that, but, but that's what it says. But that's what the that's covenant what says, yes. yes. Yeah. So there, were, you know, there would be times like that. Yeah. Any other doctrinal issues or anything? That, um, I mean, Joseph Smith or polygamy or anything uh... you know a lot of the mormon my friends mormon wives we would laugh about polygamy and we'd say well i hope the next one's a good cook or you know the i hope she likes to clean <laughs> yeah and we would kind of like to you know joke around that we were going to be the queen because we were the first wife oh, on that, our throne and we were true. just going to have staff then you, you could, know so you could interview wives right right and, and we'd wife. pick some ugly ones and we'd just give them all the jobs you know <laughs> So we had ways of coping with that yeah, in your mind by, yeah. you know, laughing it off and joking and so on. But there would be doubts from time to time. But as time went on, you would, you know, my husband was in the branch presidency yeah. and he was just completely, totally devoted Mormon. And, yeah. you know, I was too. But there were occasional was... little moments of rebellion in me. Uh, for example, the church came out with a movie, and they showed it to the entire congregation. They had a special meeting, and they said, we want you all to watch this movie, and we want you to pray about all of your neighbors and friends and pick who you're going to commit to show this to and try and to bring them into the church or introduce mm -hmm. the church to. And I watched the movie and felt like it was very manipulative because it was a movie and I, a long, long time ago where a child died. And, you know... Oh. And a child died, and then the great peace they gave them, telling them they're going to have that child again. Oh. And it was, of course, pure fiction. And so when they called us in <laughs> and said, have you chosen who, you know, Are your you friend? I said, too? I will not ever show that movie to anyone. That is manipulative, and I, I'm not going to do it. And so you know, they just, oh. well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a little rebel mm. in me from oh. time to time, and of course, Poor Barry, yeah. and the branch presidency would be like, Ugh, you know. <laughs> Interesting. So you were, uh, yeah, a little rebellion. There, there. was a little. Yeah. So Jesus, where was he at in your life at this point? Don't think I knew much about him. You know, he had his name on our church. Yeah. Uh, and when you take the sacrament at sacrament meeting, did you? No, I used to like to listen to the, the sacrament prayers, prayers, which, as you know, are wrote, and right. think, oh, let's see if they mess it up and how many times they have to say it. <laughs> oh, look at, you know, one little vowel wrong here, and they got to, you know, I, I found that amusing, but it's yeah. like, didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, not having had a Bible or known the Bible before. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus wasn't, uh, I mean, he was there, and we close in his name and speak. But right don't hear really many talks on no. Jesus. Mm -mm. It's more topical right. kinds of thing. Book of Mormon, you sense that that was the true, was true? I mean, you said it was simple, but... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, you pray and you get this testimony or what you think is a testimony, yeah. and you think, well, okay, then it's all true. So you don't bother to investigate. Yeah, and if you don't get the good feeling then it's your fault that's right, right? and you're not sincere it's not the you're not fault. praying with a true pure heart and real it's intent then yeah so yeah. it's a back on you yeah. and it you know i even had i would go through periods from time to time where i would get some doubts and they might grow and i had a few good mormon friends women that i would talk to and and i can remember some of them saying well the way you get a testimony is to bear your testimony 
I said, well, that just sounds like if you tell a lie Self. long enough, it becomes the truth. That's right. You know? And it's self-fulfilling. <laughs> or or emperor's new clothes here, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes, I feel it when yeah. you don't. You know, I thought, you know, I just didn't buy that exactly. Yeah. The interesting thing, the one woman who was pretty effective in getting me back to where I was really believing is the one that Barry spoke of in his testimony. Oh, okay. I would get to a power, I'd get to a point where the doubts would get almost unbearable. And here I am, I have three small children, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I don't have any job skills, and I'm thinking, if I find out this isn't true, what am I going to do? If this is going to just destroy my world. Yeah. So you really, you, you're not really seeking truth because you cannot see any escape. Yeah, um, and so I would turn to this friend, and she, you know, she, we were very good friends, and she would, she let, she taught the seminary classes for the oh, yeah. high school students, yeah. and we would meet and we would study, and eventually, you know, we'd pray, and I would get that strong testimony back, and in the midst of that is when Barry gave her a blessing of a long life, and oh, she was dead she... in two weeks. So not only did that plant the seeds of doubt in him, I didn't know it at the time because right. he didn't talk about it, but it took out the person that was reconverting me on a regular basis. So, oh, so you lost that so, yeah, resource. Yeah, so both yeah. of those things happened simultaneously. So what did you think there. of Barry when he said, I'm, I'm just not going to church again? Um, Devastating? No. I, there is a hopeful part, but I'm not daring to be hopeful because... You know, I, as, as we approached the age of eight for our oldest, I kept having these thoughts, you need to figure this out before your children get older because there we come a point, you, can't, you cannot rescue them from this. And I knew that. And so I kept thinking, I have to know if it's true. I have to find out what is truth before my children are baptized in it. Well, we didn't make it. The oldest was baptized. Was, okay. um, but she was eight when yeah. we came out. And yeah. so there was part of me was like, you know, a little maybe this is the chance maybe this is what i've been looking for but part of me not daring to believe that you know? what did you look so, at or did you look at anything that um, influenced you no, oh he, he mentioned the great planet earth yeah that he did that when he was a teenager mm -hmm. and it's interesting too because in fast and testimony meeting he would bear his testimony and he would tell about accepting christ as a teenager and and i was embarrassed when he said that i would think because that isn't excuse me but that's not that we don't do that mormon. we don't do that in mormon, mormon you know words. so but uh, honestly i think that's why we're out this god's faithfulness to him but um awesome. i didn't really look at um didn't really look at that, but when he said, I'm not going, and it, it was um, just the, the works were overwhelming. You know, he was a young dad, three kids, an accountant. It was tax season. He was working 65 hours a week, yeah. and he was supposed to give the talk the next day. Right. And he called me from work and said, well, I can't do it. I can't prepare this. And immediately he said, well, I'm not going to go sit up there on the stand with the branch presidency and not speak, you right. know. So I went without him for uh, about a month. And, but the um, pretty early on, we decided until we figured out, you know, I came home the first time I went by myself. And when I came back, I said, well, how do you feel? And he said, well, not too bad. I said, he said, I don't think I'll go next week either. <laughs> and you, well, you said something to somebody that it, you'd eventually, if he doesn't come back right. in six I said weeks. that to the branch president. Yeah. I knew, I knew what to expect. I knew that pretty soon they would call me into the office and they would want to give me a blessing and they would make yeah. all kinds of promises to me. And that happened the How next week. Him? And when yeah. the branch president offered that, I declined the blessing, and um, I said, if he's not back, I, I was, it was actually a month, in a month, I'm leaving too. I said, I'm giving you notice on my calling, because if I say I'll serve till you release me, I know that you won't. Um, <laughs> so you've got a month. And from that time on, we did not bring the children. Barry stayed home, mm -hmm. and, I, and I told the branch president that we would be visiting other churches if, it, if that happened, if he didn't come back. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, well... Um, he was kind of, he was really taken aback, sure. <laughs> and he said, well, okay, but uh, I want you to come here every other week so you can compare. Oh. And I looked him in the eye, and I said, after 15 years, I know what's here. Yeah. So, which was really bold. <laughs> yes, it was. So did you start coming to uh, how to say this? You started going to other churches then? Well, not quite yet. No, okay. I, I fulfilled that month that I promised them, yeah. but we never took the kids back, and I was in the primary. And so as soon as I 
Uh, well, I came home. You should back up a little bit. I came home and I contacted this friend that Barry talked about out in Seattle right. and said, well, we're thinking about looking at other churches. And she sent this literature. And, All right. um, and when Barry said, you can read it because we're so unworthy, why not? <laughs> because what had we done? He'd missed that's church twice. Comment. He had missed church yeah. twice. That's yeah, it. That's, you know, I'm, that now I'm it. unworthy. Right. And so my whole family is too. Yeah. Um, and so I just started this reading frenzy. I stayed up all night and read it. I read straight through for about 36 hours. And when I finished that packet, I knew that I had been deceived. I knew the church wasn't true because, you know, it was like just showing all the doctrinal changes. Anything stand out particularly? Just, or just... Everything. Everything stood out. Um, you know, Joseph Smith taking the other wives and the wives before he announced polygamy, the right. uh, changes in the Book of Mormon, oh, the, all changes, of that stuff the, was in the there. changes of uh, the testimony of the three witnesses, everything stood out. Wow. Um, but I had no idea what was true. No yeah. measuring stick for truth. I think that's one of the concerns I have about people leaving the church is they don't have a foundation in the Bible. They don't trust mm -hmm. that. And they don't have one in Jesus. Uh, that's, that Methodists me. going to Episcopal, they would they still take, take Jesus, Jesus with them. them. <laughs> but a Mormon is challenged with that. And right. why do you think that right. is? Well, because they, they don't have Jesus. I mean, the only place Jesus is is in the name of the church, at least in back in 1994, that's the way it was. Yeah. Well, it was with me, too, and that's right. very recent. Yeah. Right. I mean, we just don't know who Jesus is. That's absolutely right. Yeah, that's and don't trust the right. Bible. But I was back to where I was as a, as a young adult in that desperate place of yeah. not having my, sure. my no. knowing my path or the rules to live by. or you know, I, It was gone. And we did start visiting churches then after that time was up. And, you know, I couldn't believe anybody because yeah, you they could trust. show me things in the Bible. Trust, could, you know, yeah. pastors would witness to me and show me things. I go, well, why would I believe you? You know, you're a nice guy. So we're all these Mormons, you know, <laughs> so why would I believe you? To I called a ministry and I, I kind of explained the situation and I said, I need a Christian ex-Mormon because nobody gets me. I know it's a very lonely place yeah. for someone coming yeah. out. It really, it is. really is. And, and bless their heart, they found one. Really? Um, he wasn't really helpful at all, but I thought that's what I needed. But he did come with a guy from Milwaukee. We were living in Wisconsin at the time in Sheboygan. And he, there, there was this <laughs> ministry in um, Milwaukee. The gentleman's name was Jim Valentine. He was not an ex-Mormon, but he was an apologist. Wonderful guy. Knew and, a lot of stuff. And yeah. he came down with an ex-Mormon who had not been to the temple and didn't get me at all. But <laughs> in my mind, that was what that had was to happen. Okay. And honestly, the guy hardly said a word. Jim led the whole thing. But he was a Christian apologist. I'd never even heard of that. I thought that meant you just go around saying you're sorry. Yeah, I'd never heard you know? the word apologist, right. really. But yeah. And all he brought were, ex were the Bible and old books of Mormon, old Mormon legitimate, published by the church books. That's yeah. all. No anti-Mormon literature, nothing else. And it was very cut and dried. It was almost like being in a courtroom. He went, just went through the Bible and showed prophecies and the fulfillment. He just built a case. He spent nine hours with me on that Saturday, wow. just building a case. Was Barry listening to any yeah. of this? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was. Just building a case for the Bible. And when he left, he left with more stuff to read. And I remember it was the day before Easter that he came. And so I was getting closer, you know, because I, I had to have that measuring stick, that guide yeah. for truth. And he yeah. was building that case and breaking down the, the damaging that had been done to, you yeah. know, the reliability of the Bible. Right. Um, and he was able to do that. Yeah, he was very helpful with that. And as it but got... But you were open to... To learning, uh, I was. I wanted the truth. I think I that's one did, of the other problems. You know? Mormons aren't really willing to. I think their knowledge is kind of shallow, and they aren't willing to really step back and look at all. And well, and I think, think also, um, if they have grown up and been taught that the Bible is full of error and not reliable, can't be translated. Then yeah. they've already had that program into them, which I had also, sure. but only for 15 years, not for a <laughs> life. And, yeah. you know, when I realized it wasn't true, but, you know, didn't know the Bible. Yeah. So I couldn't, you know, I didn't come up with verses. I mean, if I think if I knew the Bible like I know the Bible now, and I still got a lot to learn, yeah. I think that there would have been a lot of red flags when I investigated Mormonism. Yeah. That 
I would that never, first I never time. saw, I never saw. Did you end up having what we call a born again experience? Absolutely. Uh, and this is that. interesting. Well, you know, I told you all the pastors were like, you know, oh, you know, we want to, we want to lead the Mormon girl to Christ. Right, and, right. and it was, there was a, just a ton of pressure in that time. And we finally had this one little pastor. It was his first call, first church, really sweet little guy. And yeah. he was all gung ho. And I was, I was a little rude to him, cut him off with a, I don't believe you. He wanted to show me some scriptures. And so I just kind of worked through it on it on my own. And I, I had a really harrowing experience. I was getting very close. And, I, you know, it was kind of like I crossed over to the point where I want to believe the Bible, but I do not want to be hoodwinked. I do not yeah. want to be deceived again. Right. You know, I'm really on my guard. And I had, but I was very close. I, I really think the Holy Spirit was wooing me at this point. Yeah. And I just had a horrible, horrible nightmare. And in this nightmare, I was in the Mormon temple. Of course, by this time, you know, I had taken off those garments because I knew the church wasn't true. So oh. I wasn't wearing the, the temple garments anymore. Yeah. Um, I was in the temple in this dream, and I w a demon pinned me down, a little demon about the size of our eight-year-old, but very <laughs> strong, and was judging me for breaking these temple covenants. And I could read its thoughts, and it, it, it cut out my eye, my left eye, with a box cutter. And, you know, I was, it was one of those paralyzing dreams, you know, you yeah. cannot break out of it. And finally, even though I was not saved yet, in the dream, I started calling out to Jesus. And just over and over, I, all I could say was the name Jesus. It was just Jesus, Jesus, you Jesus. And finally him. broke it. And it was just days after that. I went back to the little pastor and I said, I had some questions. I said, is Satan real? And, you know, I, I, are demons real? And had some questions. And when I got done, they said, would you like to share those scriptures with me? And he said, what scriptures? And I said, you know what scriptures. <laughs> so he shared the scriptures he wanted to share. And this is an interesting thing, too. It's, By the way, we're almost out of time. Okay, so okay. Just very, oh, sorry. He said, uh, do you feel like praying? He did not offer a prayer and say, would you like to follow me? He said, do you feel like praying? And so, you know, it. I was just like frozen, and finally, you know, I came up with my own prayer in the presence of this pastor, and it's interesting that he did that because the next day, I immediately felt this attack of, that that didn't count, you didn't mean that, and uh -huh. I was able to say, I meant every word of that. Those words were from my heart. And I you turn your life to Jesus. And that was, that was just no looking it, back. hasn't it's, been a great journey. It's been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, 30 Amazing. seconds left. What would you say to the LDS or to family, friends? Oh. Trust the Bible, huh? <laughs> Don't take anyone's word for it. Be a Berean. Check it out. Study. Be a Berean. Study. You know, that would never have happened if I knew the Bible. Because you would have compared that and said, I would have, yeah. There would have yeah. been so many red flags. It's not even in the Book of Mormon, yeah. most of that stuff either. No, Robin, it was not. so nice to meet you and, and Barry and have you share your stories and <clears throat> wish you the best in your journeys and I'm sure you're helping a lot of people. I hope people listen to this and are influenced for good. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, everybody Earl. for joining Thank us and we'll see you next time.